I think it's important for me thing is architecture, especially in my field. I think it's been long uh, thought that maybe we are the problem solvers, solvers of the world. Um, almost like a doctoral uh, position that you go make a diagnosis and make a very smart remedies. But that's going to soon be replaced by uh, AIs, right? I read that uh, now they can di the, this uh, algorithm will di perform better than doctors. We, we don't know exactly how, right? The role of nurses will remain, I think. The nurses also have a direct relation with the patients and uh, much empathetic. And uh, I think that's kind of the role of architect that will be required more, I think. The rest will be the, the machine part of this machine will be uh, just replaced simply. And I, <laughs> and I don't know what's going to happen, but good luck with it. So that's my thing. My name is Min Sok Cho. I'm, I'm based in Seoul. Uh, I have a firm called Mass Studies. Very first project, Pixel House, then Missing Matrix, Shanghai Expo 2010, Korean Pavilion and Town Space One. Those projects uh, vary uh, in scale quite drastically and uh, also the use are quite different and they're situated in a very different place, places. However, I think what's common there is uh, they have a very strong aspiration related to their identities. The Pixel House being the very tiny house, uh, 80 square meter house for family of four and they really want to have a distinct lifestyle which has to do with the alternative way of educating children and so on to Shanghai Expo that's about the aspiration of a nation which is my country South Korea and Town Space was about this IT company that had this almost utopian very much this Californian Silicon Valley inspired vision of living in this very low uh, spread out with lots of greens and nature and very different from the most people work in Korea, which is very heavy, dense urban condition. I think Missing in Matrix is actually interesting one because that's a high rise building, a residential tower that wasn't part of the requirement because it's a speculative development uh, project. But we also had played our role as a, some sort of how to live uh, together in this kind of tight urban setting with some kind of a aspiration imposed by us in a way for the project. We're actually in a quite different stage of our firm. I mean, our firm has been changing for the, over the last 17 years. Right now, majority of our uh, project coming from public sector through competitions. To be precise, I think there are 12 projects that we are right now working on. They're all, uh, 10 of them are city initiated or uh, central government or regional government. Some competition coming from privates. We're doing one religious building, sort of vernacular Korean religion building. This is quite a challenge. And parks also, that's the landscape project, purely landscape project that's also we're working on. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, different company now and I'm quite happy about it. 2003, we started it and that was four people. And we hit about 40, 40 people third, in our third year. This is when we're doing our large towers. And then, uh, but we didn't want to grow further than that. So we shrunk down a little bit. It's always between 20 something people to Right now, maximum 40 people. I don't want to go bigger. I think uh, that's relation to nature, urban ecology. I think that's very exciting. I think architecture or urban, the discipline itself has been so much about this human centric uh, approach process. But actually, I think it's a good, re good that we remind it every, every now and then we have with other actors or agent or whatever you want to call it that we have to somehow uh, negotiate. Our work is also coming from uh, that sort of uh, awareness in a way. The most urgent challenge facing architect today, maybe it relates back to why we call ourselves mass studies. Uh, I choose the word mass because it's a word commonly used in science and also in sociology. MC square to mass media, mass culture. And architect is the one bridge these things together with many other disciplines. And I think architecture has been very good at uh, articulating or responding to new scientific developments and technologies. But now we're, the science and technology developed so fast and I think we lost track of it. And maybe just staying in this kind of window dressing kind of a role or they, they don't go further. And I think it's a real severe challenge and I, Personally, I'm struggling with it. 
the Guangzhou Design Biennale 2011 was a quite exciting moment for me because it was not only because it was my first curatorial effort, but this was led by two double director, which is one is Ai Weiwei, who got in detention during the process, so he couldn't come to the opening. And then Sung Hyo-san, which is a very respected architect. And their theme was sort of pun of this famous Lao Tzu word that Tao is Tao is not Tao. So design is not design. Main show was two part, which I had to highlight the important designers called name section. And then the Brandon McEttrick, he's another brilliant uh, curator and thinker. He did unnamed parts, so it's um, authorless designs and so on. And uh, the challenge actually, it was me and I brought Anthony Fontana, who's based in LA here. Challenge for me was how to I mean, name, but uh, there are very specific design field that is not known yet. They're the pioneers and incredibly important people. Along with the super famous people also that we know like Ray Kawakubo was part of it. She did the pavilion, the Pont de Garçon, or, but also Temple Grandin, who was known for humane way of slaughtering and her uh, animal uh, behavior scientist. She kind of patterned and uh, her design for a slaughterhouse for cows has been, become the prototype. Uh, also, we, we brought uh, Bong Joon-ho, for at the time he just had a blockbuster, the host film and all the storyboard. He's an amazing cartoonist. I mean, I got to interview him and you know, he kindly also uh, let us use that wonderful sketches that he did. It was actually a quite a, a really big show. 700,000 people saw it, but mostly Koreans. Uh, but there were some important figures from Europe and America also from design field. They came and they were shocked that they couldn't find any furnitures or lampshade and, and they, they call we call ourselves design biennales i said hey there's a design festival design fair this is how the biennale should be we thought you should check the catalog <laughs> somewhere it's probably floating around the 14th uh, venice biennale korean pavilion where i took part as a commissioner and curator and also we did the exhibition design in our office which is not much of a design <laughs> No name design, in a way. At the time, the director, Rem Kohas, had a mandate, which was a very particular thing because it was never that specific. But it was about the absorbing modernity from 1914 until the year that Biennale happened, 2014. When I encountered that subject, it just immediately occurred to me that it wouldn't make sense to just go as a South Korean pavilion because 100 years of history deals with just one country, one nation before the division only it was a, a colonial state of Japan. Basically, I took that as a sort of um, excuse to engage with the North Korean architect. I mean, it was plan A, that direct engagement didn't happen. So plan B become the sort of uh, what was shown and uh, alternate, as an alternative exhibition about the architecture and city of two countries over the 100 years, which is completely ambitious, but by um, many, many people there are non-Koreans, mostly non-Koreans, who are able to go to North Korea. I'm very happy that after that, the outcome, of course, we still don't have this political situation to support this kind of a peaceful exchange. But I think there's a clearly, uh, through our discipline, we can uh, engage in a, uh, people with a very different views, although we share very different uh, cultures and uh, things um, in a different way. Architecture plays a certain role, uh, absolutely, and I'm expecting, hoping to do more so. And what I'm super happy about it is a lot of spin-up followed. So these people who gather from there, it become almost like a network. Beginning of some highlighting these people from all over the different places. Now they just keep going, coming up with the different projects. And I'm also involved in one project. 